Welcome back to Poetry, Prose, and Politics with me, the political poet, Jamia Zarsela. And on today's episode, I am super excited. In this episode, we are going to be examining faith-based perspectives on how thoughts become reality in the form of affirmations. But we're going to be doing this with one of my favorite people. I am so excited to bring out my own personal spiritual teacher who I know and love as Full Lotus, Reverend Arlene Hilton. Reverend Arlene Hilton is a spiritual teacher who delights in assisting youth and adults alike in remembering their spiritual potential and capacity. Through her workshops, lectures, and one-on-one counsel, she assists individuals in realizing their God-given attributes. She created I'm Keeping True, a multidimensional workshop, which includes and focuses on fasting, prayer, and setting intentions. These modalities support individuals' transformations. Many healing revelations and clear insight have been experienced by participating in her workshops. Reverend Arlene Hilton's vision is to assist individuals in remembering their spiritual potential through life visioning, intention setting, prayer, meditation, and embodying spiritual principles. So join me on this beautiful journey with the rawest rev that I know, Reverend Arlene Hilton. This episode is sponsored by Coconut Casual, a Black-owned lifestyle brand focused on positively impacting our globe by promoting female empowerment. It's all love at Coconut Casual. And remember, if it's for us and by us, then support us. Mm-hmm. Ah, Jamia, Jamia, finally, we're coming together. Okay, so let's just take a moment right now to turn inward. Just grateful for this opportunity to turn within and acknowledge this gift called life. Grateful for the awakening today, the fact that we woke up to a new day. Grateful for the knowing that right where we are, there's a presence and a power that is magnificent. Whether we say God or higher power or spirit, it is everywhere evenly present. There's no spot where God is not. God is life. God is my life. God is Jamia's life. And I'm so grateful for the knowing that this podcast is a God idea. It is a God idea calling forth information that can support in individuals in being inspired to live their life fully and to live a life fulfilled. My prayer this day is that the questions that are asked by Jamia, that they are answered from a place of knowing of spirit, that spirit speaks the word in and as me, and that the questions come forth. And these questions are God ideas as well that come forth and that they're answered with the ease of grace. Grateful for this time together. I named this time inspirational. I named this time loving, and I named this time uplifting. And I released this word with gratitude and thankfulness. Grateful for Jamia, grateful for this podcast, grateful for life itself. And so it is. It is done, it is done, it is done. Amen. Ashe, Ashe. Ashe, amen, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm really happy to be sitting down with you for this particular episode, for this this series, Uh, just to give a a little bit of an explanation, the this series, the affirmation series examines how thoughts become reality. And I want to do that holistically. I want to um examine what it means um metaphysically uh theology through theology um and i truly can't think of anyone better than 
than you, than my, one of my first teachers, probably my first teacher that taught me how to look at what it is that I think, what it is that I say out, um, that I speak and, and then examine my reality and see how it is that I'm shaping my life. Rev Raw is how I call you. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Rev Arlene is how we know you. But uh, Rev, can you speak to who you are um, at Agape as well as what you do with women in recovery and other projects that you're even doing in the beginning of the, the 2023? All right. Well, wonderful. First of all, I'm in gratitude. I just want to say thank you for remembering, you know, remembering uh, the time you were young and in the teen program with me and the fact that I've been doing that for 21 years at Agape International Spiritual Center still boggles my mind. Yet I know that the reason I'm there and the reason I'm doing the work I do in the in the world is because of a decision I made as a teenager. So I've been at Agape International Spiritual Center since 2001. Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith is my teacher. And I came into that community knowing principles because I'd been with other spiritual communities such as Unity and such as, uh, let's see, Unity and Johnny Coleman Universal Foundation for Better Living. Mm -hmm. I've been in a lot of metaphysical communities, yet Agape is where I blossomed from the core of what I knew. So working with with teens was my dream. I end up working in the teen room. I feel if you can work with teens and you honor them and love them, you can work with anybody because Mm -hmm. teens don't get away with anything. And so I've worked with wonderful teenagers and then we started the young adults ministry at Agape called Odyssey. That ministry is for the 20 to 35 year olds. That's been powerful. That's been going on for 15 years now. And then um, we have our young women's mentoring program which blossomed out where the young women needed a space to talk that was confidential. And we're addressing with every ministry, addressing world issues spiritually and so this has been my foundation. I graduated as a minister in 2010, but I started my work even before that. In, in Boston, I was at Christ Church Unity. I was supervisor of Children's Church. So this has been a journey for me. I've, I've continued to walk in this knowing from a child that adults need to listen right and so by hearing those words within myself when i grow up i'm gonna listen and it came out of a state of mind where as a teenager i tried to commit suicide uh and grateful that i failed at that but that also blossomed in me that i will listen as i grow up i will listen and i've wound up in beautiful communities where i can be with young people and that actually was the foundation that allowed me to be with those in recovery at my treatment center, Safe Harbor Treatment Centers. Uh, I began there, it was all women. I've been there for over 12 years now. And now, starting about a year ago, we have men. So I'm actually dealing with all men at the moment and it's been phenomenal. Uh, Basically, what I've always wanted people to know since I was a child, is that they're worthy, that they're enough, and that they're needed. And and if I knew those things, I would have never tried to commit suicide as a child, right? I, you're worthy, you're enough, and you're needed. So all of that is the foundation of where I am right now. I tried and to really sum that up for you. <laughs> <laughs> Something that I love about you Uh, and you even say this in your bio, is that you meet people where they are. You go to them. And now that, especially now that I am a mom, I know to even just get on my knees and look into my child's eyes when I'm talking to him. Uh, But can you tell me what you, what it was that you meant by that? And you also have the um, metaphysics, you're a metaphysicist, um, and why do you prefer that term over maybe like a theologian? Mm. Well, that's very interesting. As a metaphysician, 
you see beyond appearance. So the work that I do and uh, the practitioners and Reverend Michael teachings, it's new thought, ancient wisdom. I was a metaphysician before I came to the Agape community uh, because I'd studied for so many years. And what I realize is a metaphysician sees beyond appearance. So we're not trying to pray anything away. We're knowing that beyond your circumstances, there's a greater good on the other side. Healing is possible. Uh, uh, change is possible. Upliftment is possible. A metaphysician uh, sees beyond, as I said, beyond appearance, meaning that something may look one way, but under there, there is God. Under it, there is a presence and a power and that those circumstances can change, right? Circumstances are changeable, but the presence of God is unchangeable. So I'm not a theologian because I didn't study the Bible you know, from one end to another. I know the Bible, I know parts of the Bible, but I also know Buddhist teachings. I also know Muslim teachings. I also, I know other teachings. I know the, the um, different teachings. So by that, I can see the common thread, which is love. And that I believe that we are from a loving presence that, uh, that is carrying us and sustaining us through this thing called life. And so that's why I am a metaphysician. That's that's who I am. And uh, I do not teach hell and damnation. I believe that we all can, can transform our life. And there's a saying, as a man thinketh, so is he. And so I learned that when I was younger, that our thoughts are things. Um, learning it from Ernest Holmes teaching, thoughts are things. And now as I've evolved and uh, expanded, because we're not... I'm going beyond evolution. Now that I've expanded, I understand that thoughts are things, but thoughts become reality with the feelings. So it's thoughts and feelings that create. And so knowing that, I've actually changed my views over the over the years. I'm happy that you brought that up because um, yes, there is a there is a teaching by a Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu who says, watch your thoughts, they become your words. Watch your words, they become your actions. Watch your actions, they become your habits. Watch your habits, they become your character. And watch your character because they become your destiny. And Lao Tzu, I think, is just is old master. It's a Chinese philosopher. And... And in so many different places, um, me coming up from a Pentecostal Christian background, I remember verses such as, you know, Genesis one and three, and God said, let there be light. And then there was light or Proverbs 18 and 21, uh, that there is death and life, um, in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. Exodus chapter three, where Moses asked, um, that burning bush that we remember um, asked for God to give his name and, and God responds I am that I am um, but we know that affirmations are a tool and as you said uh, and how you remind me we can do an affirmation real wrong I can say a whole bunch of stuff but as you said if there's no feelings then behind it then what is it then mm. what are we just saying and so if you don't mind um my understanding of an affirmation is like a, a statement that someone would use on themselves to declare something as truth that they want to align align in and their purpose and their destiny but how would you define what an affirmation statement is or what okay, it should well. be well, you, you just gave me three different quotes. <laughs> so, and they have so many different meanings. So I, I, I'll start with um, your question, your focus question about affirmations. You know, affirmations are affirmative statements. That's what they are. And in my spiritual community, we do affirmative prayer. And affirmative prayer was taken from the template of the Lord's Prayer because Jesus was asked, how should we pray? And Jesus said, pray this way. We've taken that prayer and made it into a template. And that's how we pray. We begin with gratitude. And then we go down a list of, 
of how we pray, right? It's an affirmative prayer. So therefore, there's no begging and beseeching God for anything. Yet in the Lord's Prayer, it says, give us this day our daily bread. It doesn't say, please give us this day our daily bread. It says, give us this day. We're affirming, we're claiming this day our daily bread. And so affirmative statements are speaking your word and claiming it. You're acclaiming it. I am worthy of a fulfilled life is an affirmation. You're claiming truth. You are worthy of a fulfilled life. Now, what can support you in having a fulfilled life is if you have any non-forgiveness to forgive, if you have resentments to, to release those resentments. I mean, you there's things that can block us from having an, an affirmative and beautiful life. But the truth is we can have a life. We can have a fulfillment in life. So these statements are affirmative statements claiming the truth of what you are calling forth. And so I believe that that is the power of affirmations, yet you can speak affirmations, yet if you do not believe what you're saying, and if there is no feeling behind those affirmations of, yes, it's mine, then they're just words that you're speaking. And so I remember my first affirmation, I was working at this, this store called Marshall Fields in Chicago, and I was working with this woman and her sales were through the roof. And back then, I'm talking 1987, 86, her sales were amazing and there were hardly any customers in the store. And I remember saying to her, what are you doing? How are you getting all these sales? And she said, um, well, I study. She was telling me she studied um, Ernest Holmes. And she said she she had affirmations every day. So I said, well, well she said, uh, why don't you just come up with your own affirmation? And the first affirmation I came up with was, I am love. It just came out of nowhere. Just, I am love. And I remember I used that affirmative statement for years when I was having difficulty or challenges. I didn't really blurt off a bunch of affirmations. I had one solid affirmation that I used. I am love. Now let's go back to the statement about um, when Moses said, asked the question, who are you? Who do I say? What is your name? Who do I say that you are? And it was said that this burning bush that would not be consumed said, I am that I am. I am that I am. Meaning that the presence of God is me. I am that I am. So the presence of God, if God had a finger, is saying, I am, pointing finger at you, that I am. And so I'm very conscious of what I put with my I am. For instance, I hear people say, I am stupid, oh, I'm so fat, or, oh, I'm so ugly, or I'm so... That is defiling the name of God. And so when I speak the word, I speak it, I am worthy, I am enough, I am expanding, I am, I am dot, dot, dot. I always make sure I put my I, I am with affirmative statements. And that's what I teach the teens. That's why, that's what I say to our teens. You have to change your mind. Now, just so you know, there are mantras and mantras are a little different from affirmations. So, but affirmative statements are to change your mind. And a belief is a thought that you've thought so many times that you've come to believe it. And so you repeat these affirmative thoughts, you put your feeling into it. What would it feel like to know that about yourself? And eventually getting to a place of not just believing it, but knowing it. I think that's really interesting that you say that because I can remember being in the team room and um, battling with, a, I, I dealt with a lot of anxiety because of just life. And I kept reciting, or my mantra was, I am anxious. And I like just wanted to fix that I was anxious, but I would not let it go that I kept saying that I was anxious and that I have anxiety. And I like put that claim on myself. And yeah. that's where the isms mm -hmm. come from, is that like, oh, you know, this person is in that person and I and I placed that on myself how did you find yourself being able to combat 
self-doubt um was it just through what work did you do well it's very interesting though i want to tap back into your that statement i am anxious because that's an example of not only were you stating that to yourself over and over again but you were recreating that in your life over and over again and this is no judgment this is just an opportunity to just take a look at how we are creators we were created to create by the creator and so you were creating this feeling tone of anxiety now what i want to say is and i'm not talking medical terms of anxiety and if i had known that or when i do meet someone who tells me they're anxious one of the things i say to them is not to put your i am with anxiety i experience anxiety is far different from i am anxious and so the verbiage would have changed from i am anxious to you know i feel anxiety sometimes or i am experiencing anxiety right now so you're not claiming it for yourself it's an experience that you're having in the moment and that you're going to pass through it that's the difference that changes the view of it and it also gives it less power another thing with anxiety is many times again i'm not talking medical anxiety but anxiety in itself is like it's a lack of creativity there's a block somewhere and to step into something creative whether it's coloring which is what i started doing <laughs> i started coloring during uh during covid although i was going to work every day <laughs> um i was coloring and i uh dance if you if you love to dance but doing something creative can help unblock you when it comes to anxiety and also anxiety is thoughts that you are thinking that are against your truth so whatever thoughts are going in your mind something back there is against your truth because the truth of it is you are a grounded and courageous individual that's your truth i'm just speaking those words for you uh so anyway i had to tap into that so my apologies if i got off track but i had to address that no i appreciate it and you have many a times told me to stop claiming that you are anxious or that you are anxiety and stop saying even with my own kids like even if it's a joke don't even joke with my son and it's so interesting cuz i feel like there's this ebb and flow of me looking at what's going on around me especially during covid where we had to sit down and social media media in general was our window to outside of what was going on and there was before i had a lot of noise from the outside world that combated with my inner voice what you were talking about truth like your own truth and you trying to combat that and me feeling like mm, me being told things when i lived in for instance texas oh your hair is unprofessional um just dealing with different things such as racism, sexism, homophobia, a whole bunch of different isms and trying to combat that inner noise. And for whatever reason, I during COVID and I feel like I'm not alone for just couldn't battle it. I was also I just gave birth, but and was there was other things, you know, physically happening with me because I was changing but it just that inner noise i mean that that outside noise came back and i wasn't able to to really deal with it and then the way that i decided to to deal with a lot of the pain that i felt from covid was to study public policy cuz i felt like public policy is or or politics is how i can be in action and also give that same love in studying pup literally wanting to have a phd was a lot about being able to be a face and a voice um that affirm people that look like me that didn't look like me that had experiences like me that didn't 
um, being able to teach in prisons, so many different things I wanted to just combine because I was so angry um, and justifiably so. And so how did you, I guess, how do you um, deal with those because we have real emotions at looking at the ugliness of life um that that might happen that might appear on tv that might that might um just be when you're dealing with people in recovery if you were to deal with somebody that was a racist person you still have to very much so correct them but how do you as a Mm. metaphor as a person that studies meeting people where they're where they are how do you approach them accordingly with meeting them where they are well this is interesting because i i I don't know where that's written that i said i meet people where they are because there's a saying um when the student is ready the teacher will appear i change that saying to when the teacher is ready, the student is, will appear. So what I what I believe is that people meet me when they're ready for me. They meet me when they're ready for these teachings. And they may not even be conscious of it, but that's who I, you're meeting me for, for a reason. There's a reason that you're here and now and talking to me in this moment, right? So that's that's one part of it. So, so that's a little bit more of an understanding as far as meeting people where they are people come to me when they're ready to change or when they're ready for uh, uh, upliftment or when they're ready for something more than what they already know, that's when they meet me. When I say I meet people where they are, if I were to say that, it would be when you were in the teen room or when I would meet teenagers, some of them would be sagging, whether you had your nose pierced or whether you had tattoos, none of that matters. I accepted you just as you looked. It didn't matter. I didn't care if you were bi, if you were gay, if you were straight, like none of that mattered because principles don't matter. Principles don't care about that. All I cared about was on a soul level, your expansion and on a soul level, your knowing that this thing called life is the greatest gift you've ever been given. So now for me, as far as how I have gotten to this place. Uh, I came out of coming to America from Jamaica, being born in Jamaica, coming to America as a young girl. I had an accent, being chased home from school, uh, making myself lose my accent, uh, not being heard as a child, feeling that no one listened to me, that no one loved me. Uh, feeling my mother didn't love me because my mother didn't come to America. She sent me to America with my father and his family. And, uh, and you know, there's so much I could put on this plate. So I'm just going to put a small portion on. As I continue to grow and as I started studying, because I was Catholic as a little girl. My middle name is Cecilia. I was named after St. Cecilia. I was Baptist. I used to take my grandpa to his Baptist church in Chicago. Ironically, the name of the church was St. Andrews, but um, I would take my grandpa to church and it was A.R. Leak um, who owns the largest black funeral home in, I think in America, but especially in Chicago um, and, and not really getting the nourishment I needed from that. And then working at Marshall Fields, meeting this woman. And then I started studying what she was studying. And that was my journey of healing from the pain of my past, healing from not feeling that I was enough, healing from my skin was too dark, my lips are too big, my nose is too big, my hair is too nappy, healing from being from Jamaica, everyone thinking I'm an outsider, my own people of color. And so those were my pain points. I will call them that. And from my pain points, I then learned, uh, then I gained passion for life through my studies. So metaphysic, metaphysical understandings actually supported me in becoming who I am today. Like I got to this place of, oh, wait a minute. There are no mistakes in creation. I am needed in this thing called life. I am a creator. I am enough. 
And so, and then I even got rebellious. Oh, my nose is too big. I pierced my nose. Oh, my lips are too big. I started glossing my lips. My hair is too nappy. I locked my hair. I started, I was rebellious. My nickname in high school on my school jacket was Jamaica. Like I started doing things to, to what the world, there's a statement I used to say in the teen room. What the world says is wrong with you is really what's right with you. And I just started living from that understanding. That's the best way, that's the best way I can put it, that these understandings that I have, that I am at one with God, and if we go biblical, Jesus said, I and the Father are one, which he didn't even say Father, it was Abba, but that's another story, um, claiming oneness with the Creator. And then Jesus saying, these things I have done, you shall do also, for me means that I can claim my oneness with the creator. And when you start living from this place of knowing that you're one with this creative power of the universe and that you're here to reveal it as your life, it does change your focus. It does change. You become more grounded. You become more aware of your necessity. So when I was told as a young girl that my mother didn't want me as an adult, my mother didn't even have power over me. And that, that wasn't even true. I found out the truth later, but I also realized, wow, there's a presence and a power. The presence, God, higher power, spirit wanted me here. I was called here. And when you understand that, that's your liberation. I, I love that. And I love that you can, how consistent, like we're on, people are going to listen to this and they're going to hear it, but you really walk that. That is literally like, I, I see your steps in that, <laughs> who you are as a person and in a lot of moments. And I guess like, I just, I don't want to say I fan go girl over you are all <laughs> over you, or I like want to sit at your feet because I, I have literally done so but I just think of it as mm, I really can't I really am gotta be there and how do I how do I continuously remind myself of getting there so like listening to that and reminding my getting that reminder of oh this is the mindset that you were taught and just continuously trying, not trying, just continuously affirming that, just continuously knowing that it, that, that is true for my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's so interesting because for so long, I've always wondered, how am I gonna raise my, I have two black boys now, how am I gonna raise my black boys in this America that, only likes them when they're performative and you know and, and and I'm always concerned I experience anxiety when it comes to oh my black boys because I there's just so much that I see and remembering that I just have to just like you do walk that they will watch me walk that and that's that's how they would be raised to that's how I would raise them to 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 be able to live in in life and experience joy uh no matter what's going on no matter what's being seen on tv or what's being talked about and so I'm just so happy that you were able to come here today and I'm happy that you're continuing this I mean you were you're you have a program called I'm keeping true, right? That you're right. doing in a couple of, a couple of weeks. Do you want to talk to us about what that is? And sure. How might join? And before I get to that, I just want to add something. You mentioned racism. This is very interesting because I am always, always in work situations where I am the minority. I, it's me and, a, you know, a bunch of other people and, Right now I'm in a situation at my treatment center where there is a person who is racist. And what's interesting, and I've encountered that before, I don't encounter it outwardly a lot, but this particular individual has said a few things about me behind my back and he doesn't even know I know. 
Uh, and when I see him believing and knowing the truth principles that I know, I see him and I see the face of God. I know that he is not just that. And I can't tell you how many times he's thanked me. When I talk to him, he has no idea I know the things he said about me because none of that is important because I know who I am. I know who I am in God. And when we know who we are, no one can dictate to us. I don't even use the word. There's a word that people use. I so took it out of my mind. I can't even remember it anymore. I don't even, there's a word. What is that word? When people, um, there's certain words that I don't use and I don't put labels on people, meaning they have power over me because on a spiritual level, no one has power over me. No one has power over you. We are powerful beings. And so when, when there's certain terms that I don't use to raise people up above me, absolutely not. I don't use the word boss. No one is my boss. God is my boss. I'll use that as an example. There's certain things that I don't use because I will not have anyone above me. There's only one presence that is greater than me. That's God. That's higher power. All right. So I just want to throw that in. So I'm keeping true. First of all, I'm so honored that you know that I walk this. I'm keeping true is a program that I created and I was actually living it during Lent season. Um, and Reverend Michael saw me one day and he said to me, Hey, what's going on? You, you're glowing. You look great. I said, Oh, I'm just fasting. He said, Oh, you should you make that into a program. And I was like, mm, okay. In my head, of course, I looked at him and just smiled. And then a year later, I, I had people start joining me. And basically it's been 15 years that I've been doing the program now. And it's daily uh, readings that I've written. Uh, fasting from animal products during the season of Lent. This is all during the season of Lent. And then I added during the season of Ramadan. So it's writing a gratitude list every day, setting your tensions every morning. We're on a call at 6.15 a.m. in the morning, praying in the day. And at night at 7 p.m., we're on the phone. I believe it's 7 p.m., maybe 8 p.m. Um, we're on the phone, gratitude, making a gratitude vortex. Like it's a program that I created that actually mimicked my life. And now people have been doing it with me for years. Some have done it with me 14 years, 10 years, 15 years. And so it's coming up. Lent begins on, uh, let's see, I think Ash Wednesday is the 22nd. Yes. Of uh, this, this year. And we begin, we launch on the Sunday before Lent. And then we have a Fat Tuesday call. But it's really deepening your prayers, deepening your gratitude, being intentional every day. And it's a really powerful program. I added Ramadan. I started doing it during Ramadan for 30 days. And then last year, Ramadan and, and Lent overlapped. And I believe it's going to happen again this year. So we may not... Uh, we may not do Ramadan until it's separate again, but uh, it's, it's a powerful program and it's about, you know, keeping true to your true self, uh, keeping true to honoring, a, honoring your creator every day, remembering that you're not alone, that there's a power that is for you, that the universe is conspiring for your good. You know, I could just keep on going. So I'm going to stop right there. Oh, there it goes. Uh, no. Um, I'm really happy that that is a program that you have because like I said, trying to trying to find that inner voice again for one, being reminded having a community to remind you either virtually or not um, or, or in person to get out that, that outside noise that combats your what you both feel and what it is that you both say about yourself but nevertheless thank you again so much for uh joining us today and uh if the folks do want to find you where could they do that um on social media as well as your website well um on social media i am rev arlene one on instagram and on facebook yes i still use facebook every monday night i do a meditation uh, and prayer session on my page. It's Rev Arlene Cecilia Hilton. 
I put my full name because I have a cousin named Arlene Hilton. So, so it's Rev Arlene Cecilia Hilton. That's on Facebook. And I have my meditations are on YouTube, Rev Arlene, R-E-V period A-R-L-E-N-E. So I am now getting a little bit more into social media. I've been one that my work one-on-one is all I've really cared about. I have private clients. I have my own private clients now. Um, I'm at the treatment center, so I have a full schedule, but you know, I've been advised by people who want to hear more uh, to do more social media stuff. So that's that's kind of what I've been doing. So it's at Rev Arlene one, the number one. Uh, that's where I am on Instagram and my meditations go up on that. Thank you so much for that information and thank you so much for joining us today. Before we go, Rev, I wanted to give you some gratitude. Um, there is a, a practice that I would do, um, called give back at the evergreen state college that I used to, that I graduated from Mm -hmm. and give back is just where somebody who shared just soaks in what it is that, you know, the, what everyone else has to say. So I hope you can just soak in what it is that I have to say. Thank you so much for being that I am. Thank you so much for being the finger that points at me. Thank you so much for being a mirror, for being affirmative, for being beauty in its purest form, for being white light, for being even in absence, quote unquote, in absence of light. You are there. When I can't even see you, you are just abundant. That omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient being that went through you today to guide us, to say and remind us that we are creators, created by the creator, meant to create that is a bar that you dropped and I'm just so grateful because Lord I could I I, we could always talk about how lost we could be uh if there wasn't and I'm I'm happy I'm very joyous in myself that I decided to receive you I'm very grateful for myself for, for deciding to receive you and I'm so grateful that you decided to receive me and and be there for me so thank you thank you thank you thank you um thank i you wanted so to much. <laughs> you're trying to also... make me cry i'm close to it so no go ahead and I do accept. that we love that <laughs> I accept. thank you so much With COVID putting a damper on connecting and networking, I had to find a new way to business card. That's why I went with Link. My Link card allows me to share my podcasts, social media, websites, or whatever else about me while still keeping it safe and social distancing. The card's NFC capability allows me to share all of that in just a tap of the phone. And the QR code on the back lands people to a custom page that I've modified for Black Lives Matter or COVID updates. In fact, you can listen to this very episode up on there now. So say goodbye to handing out your old business cards and say hello to Link. And because you're a part of the Speak Free fam, enjoy a 15% off discount by using Poetry Pros at checkout. That's visiting linkapp.com and typing in Poetry Pros. That's L-I-N-Q-A-P-P dot C-O-M and typing in P-O-E-R-T-Y-P-R-O-S-E when you get like me and grab yourself a new way to business card. a wrap 
If you like this episode and want to hear more like it, then don't forget to follow the show Poetry Post and Politics at The Political Poet everywhere you are social. That's T-H-A-P-O-L-I-T-I-C-A-L-P-O-E-T everywhere you are social. The show is also aired on KTQALP 95.3 FM Tacoma, so you can always catch me over there on their airwaves, or you can listen to me wherever you stream your favorite podcast. Until next time, catch you later.